opportunity to speak here. It is a great honor. I know that I have been preceded by many famous people, the likes of uh, Riza, uh, the Dalai Lama, and of course, Kermit the Frog. Uh, it's also an honor to be speaking in one of the most uh, famous and one of the best universities in the world, uh, which has also been notoriously uh, set for a lot of my, uh, my own and my wife's uh, books and films, uh, the Harry Potter. I've been told that uh, uh, it was filmed uh, uh, also at the Christ Church um, College and Pogolins. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, Baltimore is going to jump uh, from around the corner. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Putin is not here to feel that. <laughs> on a subject which is so close to my family. Uh, you will have to excuse me, I don't possess uh, such an eloquence as the speakers who have gone before me. Uh, I am more of a straightforward uh, American style speaker. <laughs> uh, well, before I start my speech, I know that the UK debater should have three points, and this is exactly what I'll try to give you. First of all, uh, I urge you to reject this motion because I believe in humanity and its great empathy with those who are suffering. I believe that humanity cares that a man called Vasily Alexanyan and a man called Sergei Magnitsky were tortured and died as a result of their incarceration. I believe that humanity feels my pain that my first daughter is not able to go back to Russia and meet uh, her grandfather. I believe that humanity will never turn a blind eye to the killings of journalists such as Anna Politkovska and many others who have fallen victim to Putin's regime. Secondly, I speak uh, against the motion on behalf of my father who loves his country deeply and believes that Russia wants to be part of the global community but needs the West's help, including this country's help, to achieve this. Thirdly, I think as a realist, uh, because as the past few years have shown, what happens in Russia simply cannot stay in Russia. So to my main argument, I believe that as compassionate human beings, uh, you cannot let what happens in Russia stay in Russia. One of the great lessons of human history has been that when a regime is oppressing its people, when it tries to silence dissent by imprisoning and killing those who dare to challenge it, when a regime is more concerned with its own survival than with the fate of its people, and other nations must show their compassion and step in. I'm not asking for humanity to show compassion just for my father and his former business partner, Platon Labor, for languishing in penal families. Or for the family of Sergei Magnitsky, whom I mentioned has fallen victim as well. Or even Vasily Alexanyan, who was denied an AIDS medication and released on obnoxiously high bail just so that he could die at home. Instead, I'm not talking just about these cases. Uh, there are a lot more people who have fallen victim or were oppressed by the Russian mafia. <laughs> Plain reference. Uh, there are over 300,000 former businessmen rotting in Russian jail. That's about 6% of the business community in Russia. And it's not just the businessmen. It's also journalists that don't shut up when they expose the government and what it's doing. It's also the students who find themselves beaten as soon as they go out on the streets to protest what their government is doing. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our humanity must make us realize that what happens in Russia cannot stay in Russia and the West must be prepared to take a stand against this authoritarian regime. I'm not talking about the use of military might. But because Russia is a G8 power, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be taking a stand against the way that authorities treat their people. Just as it's done with many other states, there is much which can be done 
including restricting the visas of those involved in persecution. I would like to... who has eventually um, proven my point, I totally agree that corrupt Russian officials who want to come to this country and enjoy a luxurious lifestyle, send their kids to college here, should be denied that opportunity. And there is a lot of debate whether it's actually effective or not. It is effective because there is no more ideology in Russia. There is only one remaining national idea, and that is enrichment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by taking away the privilege of spending ill-gained money in this country, you'll be undermining the entire structure of a mafia state. Oh, Surely a lot of your arguments will also apply to a large number of countries in Saudi Arabia, Georgia, China. Should Western countries be similar policies both, or are we just not being Christian? Uh, I would like to agree with the fact that the Russia uh, as a state is significantly different from the other countries that you have mentioned. Russia is trying to put on a pretty face and embrace the values of this country in particular. So if you think that it should be compared with other countries who have similar disregard for human rights, then Russia should exit the G8. Russia should not try to get into the WTO. And Europe as a whole should not be helping that process of Russia exceeding to the WTO. that I mentioned are one of the actually easiest ways that you can get Russia to comply because they're not hostile to the country as a whole. They're targeting specific people and they only hurt corrupt officials. They don't hurt the rest of the population. Also, I would like to note that in the case of the United Kingdom, the sanctions come with little ramifications for this country. UK has little dependency on Russian gas and has a very diversified energy supply. Um, I also would like to make a point. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, uh, I know that I'm running out of time, so I'll be jumping a little bit uh, here and there because I would like to, uh, first of all, reply to the arguments that were brought on by the other side. Uh, the other side mentioned that charity uh, is prospering in Russia. And I would like to say that my dad's foundation, which was one of the biggest and most advanced uh, back in 2002 and 2003, Open Russia, was closed in 2006. And non-Russian NGOs were effectively outlawed. So the point that everything, please. When you say outlaw, there was a new law brought in. If NGOs and the non-profit organizations were complying with the laws, then they would have to think it wasn't a problem. Unfortunately, it means that they are effectively cut off from foreign funding. So as, soon as, as long as they as long as they comply and don't have any resources to actually do useful work in Russia that annuls their existence. Uh. <laughs> to make my final point, I would actually prefer to use the words of a person who is much more eloquent than I am, my father. 
I'm reading from his last uh, statement that he gave in court just before he was sentenced to another 13 years in Russian prison. I'll not be exaggerating if I say that millions of eyes throughout all of Russia and throughout the whole world are watching for the outcome of this trial. They are watching with the hope that Russia will after all become a country of freedom and of the law, where the law will be about the bureaucratic official, where supporting opposition parties will see being a cause for prisons, where the special services will protect the people and the law and not the bureaucracy from the people and the law, where human rights will no longer depend on the mood of the Tsar, good or evil, where on the country, the power will truly really be dependent on the citizens and the court only on the law and on God. In your hands lies far more than just the fates of two people. Here and now, the fate of every citizen of our country is being decided. People on the streets of Moscow and Chita, Petersburg and Tomsk, and other cities and settlements who do not count on becoming victims of police lawlessness. To those who have set up their own businesses, built a house, achieved success and want to pass it on to their children and not greater than uniform. And finally, those who want honorably to perform their duty for a fair wage, not expecting to be fired at any moment by corrupt bosses on any pretext. This is not about Platon and me, at least not only about us. It is about the hopes of many citizens of our country.